So I think we're good. And once people start coming in right here. We'll... Yeah. Are we live? I think so. <laughs> we're going, we're live. We're going to write a comment. We're going to be the first oh ones goodness. to comment. Hi everybody. We're live. Michelle Walling and Greg Prescott from N5D.com. We're here in service to connect with you guys and uh, mm -hmm. to, we don't know all the answers, do we? But we like to take questions and fumble around and see what we can come up with. Yeah. Um, and as I've mentioned before, um, in all the previous N5D Facebook Lives, if you have any questions, start it out with a question mark, ask your question, and that way it's easier for us to find them and Actually, this time, because I have Michelle here, um, she's going to be able to monitor the questions. So hopefully we'll answer all of them. Hi, Lindsay, Armando, and Amanda. Yes. Hi, everyone that's joined us. Uh, Jen, Ann, um, Patricia, Akram, Jessica, namaste. So glad that you all made it aboard to join us here. Yeah. Well, we wanted to start off with Greg talking about his anomaly for the last two weeks. Yeah. I've had a... Uh, I posted this on Facebook and I took a, a screenshot of it uh, this morning because it's happened so many times in a row that I eventually said, okay, the universe is trying to tell me I need to screenshot this and talk to other people about this. Um, I've been waking up at 4.55 a.m., not 4.54, not 4.56, 4.55 a.m. And I thought, well, you know, the universe would normally give you a 4.44, you know, or something yeah, more synchronous. Um, so. But I, I was trying to figure out why am I getting 455? So I, I did look up uh, angel numbers, uh, 455. And um, what it says is number 455 is a blend of the energies and attributes of no, the number four and five. And it goes on to talk about the numbers of four and five, but specifically uh, angel number 455 is a message that the life choices and changes you are currently experiencing have been brought back by the hard work you put towards your life path and soul purpose. Look upon them as blessings as these new changes and opportunities will bring about auspicious circumstances for you. Listen to your intuition and guidance from the angels for directions and instructions as to your next steps. Angel number 455 tells you to maintain a positive attitude about the new, about the new entering your life and keep an open mind as to the opportunities presenting to you. Keep in mind that everything happens for a reason and nothing happens by chance. So even though the reasons for the changes may not be clear at this time, trust that all will fall into place for you. These changes have come about so that you can break free from old restraints and constraints and freely pursue your soul mission and life purpose as a spiritual being. Angel number 455 assures you that you are being supported and guided by the angels through important and necessary life changes. Trust and follow their guidance and know that these changes are for your highest good. These changes and the long-term results will lead to the answers to your prayers. It doesn't matter what other people say. It is now, it is how you react and what you choose to believe about yourself that matters. Do things the way that suits you to find your own niche. If you're just joining us, we're talking about Greg being awakened, I would say, uh, <laughs> at 4.55 a.m. for the last two weeks solid. And so what he did is he just read um, the explanation. The angel number explanation for the number 4.55. So now a lot of you people have read the article or seen the video on YouTube about the dream I had about the three tidal waves that come in. And uh, we, Michelle and I actually pieced together some of that puzzle this morning when we were talking about the 455. And, uh, and just a brief recap, um, that one, the three tidal wave dream I had, I was going out to the beach and I look up and there's a huge tidal wave coming. And I turn around to, to, uh, to go into this beach house and I look up on the other direction, in the other direction, another tidal wave is coming 10 times bigger than the first one. So I run into this beach house and while I'm in there, I stick my hand through the window and can touch the water and I pull it back out and the water goes over and then recedes and I get out of the house and I look up back over in the opposite direction again, another tidal wave is coming. So I get back into the house, water rushes over and recedes again and I get out and the whole energy had changed. 
Now, what we piece together, thanks to Michelle, is that the house, and I've mentioned this so many times um, as a psychology major and child and family therapist, in the psychology of sleep and dreams, whenever you see yourself in a car or in a house, the car or the house is you. So what happened is I went inside and I think that's a key to figuring out. Going um, how, within. Yeah, to go within, to get to where we're going. It's, it's a huge piece of the puzzle. Now, my guys have always been telling me, you know, stay grounded, keep a high vibration, love, express gratitude and forgive. Definitely going within fits within all that. So that's, that's something huge. And I think there's one other thing we, we figured out about that too. Oh, I just moved into a new place right here on Siesta Key. And, uh, on the beach. On the beach. So this might be the house this, yeah, <laughs> where it another, happens. And another, like, the vision I got was, like, in another reality, when things shift for you, this house may not even be here. A yeah. different house may be here, a different reality. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what we know Ascension to be is... <laughs> We're both going... <laughs> we do that a lot. Sometimes we'll have our legs crossed, you know, uh -huh. the exact same way or... We'll be sitting there doing this exact, exact. I don't know how it happens. Yeah. It happens all the time. It does. We just laugh. Um, but anyway, I think that the message was about, um, well, the first thing I, I thought was four, meaning F-O-R, and then five, five, meaning change. So you're in for a double change is what I got. And then the, then he looked up the meaning of it uh, on the angel thing. And um, I think it felt very positive to me. Um, I think that it's, uh, since Greg's a timeline jumper, I think that he leaves messages for himself. And I think he was really trying to hit him over the head saying, Greg, change is coming. Double change is coming. And I think it's a good thing. No matter what the change is, the message is that everything happens for a reason. And we must change in order to move out of this reality into a new one. So I think it's a good one. So I want to say hello to everyone that's joining us, and I'm sorry that I missed everyone. Hello to everyone that's watching this um, on the recorded version as well. But we have Danielle Richardson, Jamie Sundance Christian, oh gosh, Carrie Parker, it's going by quickly now, Sandy Barbel, Rebecca, Shannon, Susie, Sally, <laughs> Vanessa, Candice, uh, Derek, Tom, Tammy, Kim. I want to say hi to Sky, Josh, and Sandy from the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light, which I'll be talking more about in a little while. They're joining us live as well cool. right now. Awesome. Well, Lionsgate. Yeah. Yesterday. Oh my gosh. Uh, I was uh, I was awake. I was awakened at 2.22 a.m. Mm -hmm. And the message I got was a re repeated message that I'd had before. And it's about the importance of everyone joining into a global meditation or joining together in meditation to um, to bring intention on what we want on this, what we want in our reality. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, so I'm writing an article and I have on my Facebook page, I have listed some global meditations that happen every week or every month, including the one that we do on Monday nights here at the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light. Uh, in Sarasota with uh, joining in with my friend Sharon Elizabeth James who's the reverend there at the Cosmic Center and that's also where I office and where I see my in in person in person uh, clients mm -hmm. we have as I'm saying that we have 111 live people live people and my Facebook has been stuck on 111 notifications um, my guides do that with me a lot so um, <laughs> Global meditation. So the Maharishi effect is very important. And I know Josh from the center um, who actually introduced me to the center up there. He and he's um, working on trying to get some information together for transcendental meditation, uh, which they meet every they don't meet. They have well, they do meet, but they want people to try to join in to theirs on Sundays. I'm going to get some times together. I'm going to get some various meditations that you can do because everybody's different and different days of the week and I'm going to put this all in an article and I just encourage everyone to try to spend a few minutes even if it's five minutes even if it's going on that app mm -hmm. 
what's the name of that meditation app? Insight. Um, Insight. And just yeah. joining in for global peace, for unconditional love, uh, for this, for the planet, for the shift out of this matrix into one that is um, in our highest and best good for humanity and, and freeing us for freedom. And so that's that's really what um, what my day started out at 2:22. Then I was so full of energy with that message, and I've I've mentioned this before, but. I just hadn't really um, done anything except join. I personally go to the center every Monday night to join in the meditation. It's called Anchoring Light. And it's on the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Lives, Lights Facebook page live Monday nights around 8 p.m. So you can actually join in on that from your computer. But I was uh, so full of energy yesterday. I couldn't even take a nap. I was, I was wired up. I was feeling good. Mm -hmm. And so that was the lion's gate for us. We Well, we got up early. We well, were on we, the beach. We were up early. Uh, we, yeah, yeah, you were up at 4.55. I was up yeah. at 2.22. So we went to the beach. Before the sunrise. We had the full moon on the water side right over the stargate. Yes. And then we had the sunrise on the other side. And yep. we made our intentions yesterday. Now the lion's gate is going, the energies, the opening, is going through to until Saturday. Mm -hmm. Correct. So you can still make the ground and, and center and meditate and just say your intentions out loud for the for the new earth that you would like to create. Mm -hmm. Hi, Londa Curtis. <laughs> I was <laughs> Hi, pointing Brooks that Allen. out. Yes. So, um, okay, let's Kat move Kenny, along. Kenny, Gail, uh, Brianna. We, we want you to ask some questions towards the end. We have a few more things to talk about. But you, also, yeah. if you're going to ask a question, please put a question mark or two or three before it. Ask your question and then uh, afterwards, that way it's easier for us to find them and be able to an answer them right now. Go ahead. So when you assimilate these energies, I think that it takes a lot on your body because we're turning crystalline. And so today we woke up and we, you know, we kind of were like zombi zombified. We're like, oh, um, okay, we ate breakfast and we both crashed yeah. for about two hours. So today is a little fuzzy. It's kind of like integration day, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Yeah, I was up at, uh, once again, obviously 4.55 and uh, did my work. And, you know, that's what I usually do every morning, wake up, go to work. Uh, yeah, start working on prepping the, the news for N5D Alternative News. But around 8 o'clock... That was it. Uh, we both had uh, sleep. It, both drained and the energies are just coming in. So let us know if, uh, in the chat here. How are you guys feeling with these 8-8 uh, eight, eight energies that have been going on? Even though it's uh, we're past the 8-8 eight, eight Lion's Gate, like Michelle was saying, these energies go on right through until to, till or through Saturday. Until Saturday. I Until don't know. Saturday, yeah, we're not sure. <laughs> no, it's not, but <laughs> we're, we're still within those I energies. So let us know in, in chat um, how you guys are feeling. Are you feeling a lot of energy or are you? do you feel like drained and you need to perhaps go on the other side and work a little bit more through your sleep? Yeah. Let us know. Sleep is so important when you feel it like it. And also, um, what, drinking a lot of water yes. is very important right now. And yeah. we just can't emphasize enough the importance of grounding and being in nature and using whatever uh, methods of clearing that works best for you. We like salt water, the sea, the ocean, the 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sands, salt baths, yeah. uh, the swimming pool even, mm -hmm. you know, just bless the water and, and allow it to, to cleanse your aura. So I was at the drum circle. I just want to give a shout out to Tara and Carter. So what I do is I go to the drum circle. I usually walk around in a circle and I, I send out positive energy to everyone. So I get about halfway around the circle and I hear this, Greg! <laughs> and I, I, I look at these two people and they're like, you don't know us, but we follow your website. And we ended up chatting the whole night um, there. Uh, wonderful people, they're from uh, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. And they came down because they saw a uh, one of my previous Facebook Lives and they wanted to experience the 99.9% .9 quartz crystal sand. So they're wonderful people. Just want to give a shout out to both of them. And hey, thanks for uh, making it down here. So Jamie says, I felt very empty for about five days. Any meditation advice to reconnect to source? That's what it feels like. I'm cut off totally. Well, I think we covered 
the the basics is Ground. most people most <laughs> people especially star seeds and empaths they have a really hard time actually literally grounding because sometimes it doesn't feel good but when you get to a certain point where you're in, you're realizing that you don't want to actually take everyone's crap in on you know yourself um, then grounding and centering actually centering actually puts all of your auric bodies your your spiritual body your mental body your physical body your emotional body all together like they should be and it allows you to be completely centered in, in your column of light and be able to bring those energies in but what i'm feeling for you actually um, is that your your uh, crown chakra is not open so i would suggest that you imagine that you have um, a, a lotus flower on your head Imagine all the petals opening up and ask your guidance team to help you do this gently. And um, that way you can uh, begin to actually receive those source energies that we need to be connecting with. We're connected in the heart center as well. So if you've had any trauma or any heartbreak and have not done your work on opening up your heart, and um, treating others with the unconditional love that you would like to receive, then um, that's going to be blocking you as well. I mean, we're all working on that, aren't we? I mean, that's the, like the main thing is, is opening our heart because the heart is everything in ascension. When you, when you get your heart chakra open or your heart center open, where your aspect of source is, where your isness is, um, that is what is going to resonate you to the field of source and be able to connect even um, to, to expand your connection with source. So it also is good to have, you know, all of your chakras open, including the crown, but that's what I went to with you. So everyone's different. And I was just specifically answering that particular question for her. Okay. Well, we have a bunch of stuff that's already come up. Uh, maybe we can handle Let's one of them. Yeah. Shakti Sirius says, do you both feel angels help us or have their own agenda? Something has been helping me since a young age. I always believed in angels. However, came across some information lately that caused a bit of confusion. Um, well, yeah, you know, and that's a great point because, you know, I've talked about this with channeling. Sometimes people are channeling archangels and while maybe most of the time they are actually channeling archangels, they can be posing as archangels and be nefarious entities. But for the most part, I think that most of the angels that are there, I always ask my angels and guides for support protection. And they're always included in my uh, walk of gratitude. But I think for the most part that they are there, they are bene benevolent and uh, helping you. Um, you can also just be double checking to make sure like, for example, when I smudge, I always say that um, only those of the highest vibration of truth, love and light are welcome here. So that would ensure that any negative or malevolent entities wouldn't be around or with you. Well, the interesting thing is that we use different language, but I think we're all talking about the same thing. You can be talking about angels. You can be talking about extraterrestrials. You can be talking about ascended masters. You can be talking about your higher self aspects, all the same thing. We're talking about light beings. We're talking about beings that in their natural state are a sphere of light. And these are that that's why you can call on your angels, guides, ascended masters, um, anyone in your highest and best interest, your higher self, your oversoul source, it's all the same at a higher level, but there are beings, spirit light beings who are helping us. And um, I think to answer your question specifically, you need to learn how to decide for yourself how it feels. Does it feel good? Does it make your heart swell with love or does it constrict your solar plexus? Follow your body. Your body's like the best clue uh, giver for for you in your ascension process to try to figure out what's going on. Okay. Well, I hope that answered your question, Shakti. We're going to move on to. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's this is Rebecca Stats Coulter. 
Have you watched the series, The 4400? We watched the series and Greg, it's going to take a lot for him to have his jaw drop. But for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, can you believe this? But not only that, but Greg was watching it the beginning and um, something told him to take this one name. Scott Peters. And make a producer anagram. or something. And yeah. He, I don't know how he knew to do anagram, but he got on the computer and an anagram is something that you can take a name and put it in there and come up with different uh, ways that the letters make different words. Words, yeah. And so... <laughs> so as it turned out, Scott Peters, if you switch the words around, spells out Prescott ETs. And I think he was a producer or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so it's kind of like I left myself a clue, you know. And the 4400 was a, an amazing It was an amazing uh, series. series. And it started out really good. It got a little dark, though, at the end. But it had the premise for being an incredible series. And they could have kept it going longer if it didn't get darker at the end. But if you have the opportunity to watch, like, the first season and a half or so, I think everyone will dig it. Yeah, I think that's what Hollywood does, though. They they draw us in, and then they they you know try to bring your vibration down at the end. Mm -hmm. But it was really cool. Hope you hope you liked it too. You want to read that one? Um, Christina says, "Spirit won't let me sleep past one thirty to two thirty a.m. anymore. I only doze in and out past that time since last November. Any ideas on how I can get a good night's sleep without going to bed at five p.m.?" I mean, you know, these kind of questions, they're so um, individual. I really have to ask more questions like, are you being grounded? <laughs> you know? Um, well, your diet, um, What are, are you eating? Do you drink coffee, uh, caffeine, or anything like that throughout the day? Have you tried taking melatonin? You might want to try three or five milligrams of melatonin. Perhaps. There's some people that, what I'm getting is that there's some people that, um, we have a belief system as to what time we should really be asleep. And if you have an eight to five job or something like that, that makes sense. But if you don't have an eight to five job, then what's wrong with staying up at three or four or five or six? Sometimes uh, we, some people's job is to be awake and balance and hold the energies on the planet for all the other people who are asleep on the other side of the world. It's like, it's like, the way our matrix works is that that's why people, that's why we have time zones. So some people on the other side of the world can be awake while they, we're asleep and some people can be asleep while they're awake. So I wouldn't uh, let it bother you too much. You can take a nap during the day. Uh, one thing we like about working from home is the freedom to be able to sleep whenever we feel like it. And we don't have to, we don't have to sleep. We stay awake, mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. Always listen to your body. So, but I do want to talk about, coffee I hope that answered your question it you know these questions are really hard to finalize the way I work as a life coach is I tune into when you speak um, I tune into your field and I read your field so it's kind of hard to do that when you're reading a question um, but here's a question um, that Connie gave why do some spiritual people say say to stay off coffee or caffeine and I think, first of all, because coffee is a neurostimulant, and as we're trying to clear ourselves and actually um, calm our bodies down, sometimes that's not good. However, there's always exceptions for everyone. Star seeds um, that work a lot at night, we get up and we're tired. And if we really need to you know, move around, we need a stimulant. Also, because of being an empath, a lot of times we draw, we blow our adrenal glands out when we are tired a lot. So, you know, in order for us to be incarnated here and do our job, we sometimes, some of us need coffee. Um, I've noticed that I feel better when I don't drink coffee, but I, I like to have at least one cup of coffee a day. I really think that you've got to pay attention to your body. If coffee makes you really wired up and unbalanced and not leveled out, then I wouldn't drink it. If coffee makes you feel really good and you're happy, then I don't know. We're not medical professionals, but I think that there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, trying to get people to feel guilty, trying to make people, you know, take uh, take this or that and pay this or that. I think you should listen to your body. Well, everyone, like Michelle said, not everyone's the same. Everyone's wired differently. I know that, um, you know, when I was a kid, I had... Uh, extreme ADHD and uh, on the back of every report card they also pay attention in class 
it's just boring. But I uh, just couldn't pay attention. It was utterly, utterly boring. But as I got older, I learned how to deal with it a little bit better. And uh, when I was in college, I was prescribed Adderall, which is a stimulant, an amphetamine. And uh, this is how we're all wired differently. I could take an Adderall and then within an hour go to sleep where everyone else had anyone else taken that or, you know, 99.9% .9 of the people have taken that they'd be bouncing off the walls. I could sleep easily. Can we get rid of that? Yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. that's just like, what do I do? Yeah, that's but it. how do we do, how do we get rid of that? I don't know. Person. Uh, I'll go back and uh, ban. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, just listen to your body and uh, everything will be okay. Um, to realize that we're not all, the same and sometimes there are people you know I know people that can wake up in the middle of the night have a cigarette and go right back to sleep even having after all that having all that nicotine well I can I drink organic coffee first of all I'll try to do everything organic I can drink coffee and go back to sleep sometimes too so mm -hmm. it just depends I mean we're in a matrix this is a hologram whatever's in here is what you're creating for yourself well answer Aisha. okay um, loving the high energies, but been experiencing a few roaring, egotistical, grumpy people, like the guy that <laughs> yeah, the horn me. at us, <laughs> bringing down my high vibes and struggling to let go of 3D reactions, of 3D reactions, and falling into a victim mode when they come into my space. I've become so sensitive to negative energy or even loud sounds. Does anyone feel an extra sensitive? inside to a point that one cannot tolerate it. Sorry, I'm just reading what she's typed here. Well, I think that um, I wrote an article on N5D, we just posted it. What's the name of my article? Um, I'll get that in just a second. Uh, basically, we, we draw to us what kind of vibration we're putting out. And I'm not saying that you're putting out that vibration, but what I'm saying is that if we have a, if we carry a strong light as a star seed, um, we can draw, we can set off alarms in the matrix and they definitely want to uh, rain on our parade. So there's two things to look at. One is, are you in kind of a low spot right now? Or two, are you shining your light so brightly that they're, that the matrix is really trying to bring you down? Um, like I, like I was just saying, uh, Greg pulled out in front of someone today and there was plenty of room. Everything was fine, but it was a big old pickup truck and he had a, an a, air horn, a, a fog uh -huh. air horn. And then he pulled up behind us at the red light. And then we went about, um, 250 yards and we got in the turn, left turn lane to turn left. And I said, Hey, look, I looked in the rearview mirror. Hey, look, that truck's behind us. He was just behind us to intimidate us. He wasn't even turning left. So no. we turned left and then he went straight. He went back around and went straight. So we laughed about it. What do you do? You laugh yeah. about it. And you know, that's an opportunity to use Ho'oponopono. Um, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you and thank you. You know, just put it out there. And whenever stuff like that happens, I did that. Uh, when As soon as we got back and went out there and sent out Ho'oponopono to him and it's done, it's over with as far as I'm concerned. Well, there's chaos out there. There's chaos out there. It can be wild. Um, a lot of us want to um, draw in when when it's crazy like that. We want to go within. We want to we want to shut the curtains. We want to stay in bed for three days. <laughs> this is like what the what was it the Hopi? What is the Indians said? Um, you want to go inside and draw the curtains. And anyway, uh, dark three days of darkness. <laughs> So it's, it's pretty dark out there, but literally if you are truly staying centered, balanced, trying to stay in a really good mood, trying to control your thoughts and actions, how you react to things and changing the vibration, we are, we're transformational people. We can literally change a situation. Um, but my article was, did you look that up? Yeah. Sorry. Cause <laughs> well, I can't keep too many, what to avoid when timeline jumping. And it talks about, um, it was just released today, and it talks about the artificial matrix having black holes in them or um, what can be called uh, tubes. 
you don't want to go down the tube. Once you go down the tube, that's when your vibration continues to fall. You're matching the vibration of others. You want to try to stay above the black hole or ab avoid falling into the tube, into the snake, the, 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 the mouth of the snake. Oh, this one went right by us. It okay. was there, and I think I might have it. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. <laughs> well, let me talk about something real quick while you look at that. Greg, Here's another one mind. anyway. Go ahead. Um, we posted an article yesterday on N5D called Week of Bliss, Rejuvenation, Meditations, and Harmonic Convergence. What the heck is that? Well, we had all of these things that we were doing um, on the weekend of 18th through Monday, August 21st. And I thought, why don't we just put an article out that shows everything together that everyone, if they're interested in coming to Sarasota, now's a really good time, especially because of the Lionsgate energies and then the solar eclipse energies, which is on the 21st, the solar eclipse. And um, so we put an article together. And so let me just tell you, go on N5D and look up, um, just scroll down till you find Weekend of Bliss. Uh, Friday, August 18th, uh, from 11 to 7, you can book a session with me or uh, two of our healers up at the center, at the Cosmic Center of Light. So you can come into town and get a life coach session, or you can get um, another kind of holistic session, which would be awesome to get you really good and grounded here. You might want to go to dinner at Captain Kirk. It's one of our favorite places to eat. We might be hanging out there Friday night and just um, to, you know. Get your picture taken with Buddha. With Buddha, exactly. Saturday uh, between 12 and 3, I have a live Cosmic Awakening show taping with Sharon Elizabeth James of the Cosmic Center. We're going to be talking about the importance of <clears throat> offsetting any nefarious things that are planned for the um solar eclipse and what that means is when you have eclipses it provides gateways to use and, and, and energies to be used for good good or bad and it's um there's been a lot of people that have received messages that um to focus as star seeds and light workers on making sure that the energy is used for good and that's what we're going to be doing on monday night at the center um so i'll get to that in just a second but I have all kinds of questions for Sharon. You can see back kind of like back scenes on how uh, one of my live Cosmic Awakening shows are filmed. And then um, that evening, it's really cool that we that everything kind of fell into place. We are going, Greg and myself and Sharon Elizabeth are going to the Harmonic Convergence at the 30 year anniversary of the Harmonic Convergence at Zen Acres in Cape Coral, Florida. The address is on the article. It's hosted by Rosie Neal, Janet Sanders, Holly Porman, and Joanna Salerno. So there's going to be about 18 speakers. Um, it's free. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. Oh, it's only $10 to go to the Cosmic Awakening show. I forgot to tell about um, mm -hmm. pricing because almost everything is free this weekend. Not this weekend, but the next one coming up. Um, it's going to be a great time out at this beautiful ranch um, in Cape Coral, so that'll be fun. And they, they suggest to uh, bring, it's like a potluck kind of dinner, so mm -hmm. bring something to eat. That's the only thing that they request. Um, from, and 18 and older, no, no children. And that's from 5 to 10 p.m. And uh, bring a blanket or a chair. And bug spray. Yeah, and just in case, she said, Rosie said she'd never, uh, she doesn't know what it's like at night. She doesn't know if there's any mosquitoes or whatever. So yeah, be safe. some or places, some long, long sleep. Depending long where you are, we have what what are called no see -ems. <laughs> You can't see them. No see them. They're boogers too. You don't see them. You don't feel them, and they bite you. If you so, want to go to that event, be sure and RV at RSVP yeah. on Facebook, and we put the link to do that. So okay. I want to give a shout out to some more people that have been coming here. We have uh, Brent Sage, Eugenia Ortiz, Elizabeth LeBlonde, Dennis Prophet, Tiffany Styles, Liz Hargreaves, Yolanda Curtis. So Yolanda, Yolanda, I already said hi to you. Uh, who else do we have here? Christina Collette. Amber Gunther, Melody Angelique Ann. Kruger, Joy. Wow. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Yeah, so Let honored me get and blessed. through this weekend okay. because not everybody's interested in this. Um, 
But everybody's interested in the N5D meetup on the beach the next day. Of course. From three to six. And then after six, we all go over to the drum circle. Mm -hmm. So what a great opportunity to come for the weekend and have all these things to do. Um, then the next day is the solar eclipse day, Monday, yep. August 21st. Yep. And Sharon is going to lead. We're going to start at 7 p.m. up at the center. And Sharon's going to lead us into a meditation, a global meditation for the solar eclipse energies. What's interesting about the solar eclipse is, is that it can be seen across the United States. And so we're going to put energy to make sure that that um, that the nefarious people can't use the energies well, for once. something for yeah. the United States in a negative way. Mm -hmm. um, because just being this is what we do, just being conscious of it, you know, we're going to put our intentions. If you can't make it to that, you can join us on Facebook Live on the Cosmic Center's page. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I hope we hope to see everyone that weekend come to Sarasota. And um, let me take some, you want to do some more questions? Yeah. What would you like to do? Yeah, we have a bunch of questions. Um, no, I think, pretty sure he asked a question before, but it already went by. So this, I think, is a follow-up. So let's we're gonna have to catch that one on the next one. <laughs> well, I have a few while you're picking. Okay. Well, all right. Celeste Tesla, hi. As an incarnated incarnated angel, I'm curious to know how I can ascend. I know that by eating right, mostly vegetarian, meditating, helping out others, etc. But is there anything else I should know? The most important thing that you need to realize about ascension is just a, it's just a word for raising your vibrational frequency so that you can um, tune the radio or turn the channel into the reality that you would like to experience. And what that means is different for every single person because everyone is creating their own reality while they're co-creating connected with everyone else. So. Um, you've got to open up your heart and you you've got to start learning how to react differently to what happens in the matrix and be able to be responsible for your thoughts and actions because that's what's creating your reality and raising your vibration you can go on n5d.com and type in raising your vibration in the search button and get all kinds of articles there's probably 50 articles on raising your vibration by now. Easily. <laughs> so that's what's most important is being in your heart. I would also add, don't overthink it. I guarantee you're on the right path. And, you know, as long as you're 51% good, you know, just the message I keep getting over and over and over again, stay grounded, keep your vibrations high, love, express gratitude, and forgive. Just do that. You'll be fine. You know, we're, we're in service to others. And that's kind of important as well. Mm -hmm. Here's a comment from Benjamin Cohenberg. <laughs> yeah, you guys, <laughs> I'm reading this exactly how it's written. <laughs> yeah, you guys express a lot of Lyran energy. Benjamin is Very intuitive. so intuitive because I meant to say that with the Lionsgate energies, that's right up Greg's alley because he's yeah. tied to the to the lyron or to the lions mm -hmm. or to the cat uh type uh as you can tell with the, with the hair <laughs> to the <Rawr>. cat race <laughs> <laughs> also um the syrians uh, are tied to the lions as well okay so i have another question here i just gotta it's i've copied and pasted them into a notepad so they're kind of hard to read but okay this one's from lauren leonard we could not believe the energy that surged in us yesterday. It was incredible. I rarely wake up with a headache, but did today. I put salt under the tongue and made a fruit smoothie and sat in the sun for 35 minutes. That's all you need to do. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I think that that's exactly, you know, you're listening to your body. You're doing exactly what you need to do. And uh, appreciate the comment about letting us know how you guys are doing with these energies. and. I encourage everyone else to, you know, just come out and tell us what's going on here because what's going to happen is a lot of people are going to be seeing this maybe on the recorded version and they're going to be going through the same thing that you are too. So, so Taryn says, the energies were so high yesterday. I felt blissful. I kept telling my husband, I feel high on life right now. And I felt like running a marathon and I don't even run me either. <laughs> Today I'm still vibrating inside 
but I have been feeling grumpy and impatient. Staying in the now has been more difficult than usual. Why such a dramatic change? Um, well, I think I covered that earlier. When these energies come in like that, you know, you take them in and then it takes a while. The next day, it's like an ascension hangover. Uh, you've got to assimilate the energies and it actually is literally changing your crystalline structure in your body. Mm -hmm. So just keep grounded and just know that this is the way Ascension is. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have your ups, you're going to have your downs. That's for sure. Christopher Allen Moore says there's a weekly drum circle in Portland, Oregon. It's every Sunday of the, of the year under the Hawthorne Bridge near the fire station. Awesome. As long as it's not raining, at least it's under a bridge, right? Because yes. it rains a lot in Oregon. So Tammy says this maybe anger with this moon energy. Why are some of us feeling it? I mean, a lot of people feel anger with the full moon. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just a lunatic. Lunar, energy. Luna, yeah. Lunatic, lunatic energy. Yeah. But, um, these energies are going to be bringing up anything that you're holding on to. So if anger is coming up, then accept that that's what's that's what you're feeling and feel into it and just stay centered and grounded and acknowledge it and then let it go. Yeah. I think that, you know, part of your shadow self will be exposed in there and for a good thing and just express gratitude. Thank um, you for, for coming up. Yeah. yeah for, it's, you know, look, we we're not perfect. You know, we have our own little tips as well. And it's a gift when I trigger him or he triggers me because it allows us to move through some energies. This, you know, ascension is about change and energy movement. This, the energy has been stagnant for so long on this planet. And we are literally making the change happen every time we're faced with a challenge and we move energy. We're making it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a few questions that I caught earlier. It's from Tammy. <laughs> She's a very inquisitive woman. <laughs> uh, Inquiring minds want to know. Why did a lot of us experience anger? Oh, that, that was from this. Okay, that, that was a re repeat of question. Okay, so uh, Christina, Colette, hang on, let me just format this a little so I can read it. Okay, spirit won't let me sleep past 1 to 2.30 a.m. Did we answer this? I don't think so. Yes, we answered that. We did, okay. Derek says, narcissism seems to be rearing its head on personal and public platforms. Do you think we can transmute that program out of existence? I think, Derek, it starts with every single person. Um, we're not here to, to, to transmute or change anyone else. We're here to do it for ourselves, and we affect the collective consciousness that way. And I think that we'll have a bifurcation or split of timelines to where eventually those of us who are vibrating out of ego and more in our heart will be on, a, on one timeline. And those who are stuck in ego, including narcissism, jealousy, um, the need to control others, things like that will be stuck on that other timeline. And eventually we all see each other again. So it doesn't matter. Let's not get hung up on what's going to happen to my family or what's going to happen here or there. We're here to do a job. If you're a star seed and you're listening to this, you probably are. We're here to do a job and working on ourselves and not so much worry about other people right now. For the longest time, we, you know, there was a program of the new age, um, for you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 years, that was a savior program and got the light workers really expending their energy trying to save other people. And I think what we've really realized in the last couple of years is, is we're here to work on ourselves. And when we do that, that's what's gonna shift. And we can't continue to, to give so much energy to where we can't hold that light and ground it here. We're here to hold it, not to give it away. So we still have a few more things we can talk about, but in the meanwhile, if anybody has a question, Questions. yeah, just uh, type in a question yeah. mark or two before your question and I'll do the best I let can to, to get them. Okay. So um, here's another, um, here's a question that we took beforehand. Uh, Rhonda says when jumping timelines consciously or not, is it possible to change an outcome from the past, which alters the now? Or is that interference with others' free will and soul contracts? Well, there's that can be answered several different ways. I would say the first answer is yes, it's possible to change an outcome from the past. 
um, which alters the now. It's more like when you're in the now and you make a decision, uh, it changes um, the overlay of the timeline that's happening at the same time. The past is actually here, we're here, the future may be here, it's all laid over. So when, when you're existing in the now and you make a different choice um, or react differently to something that's happening in your reality, it does change the past that is tied in to the timeline on that node point for the past. And um, as far as the free will and soul contracts, I think these things are orchestrated on higher levels. And I think that um, our reality consists of um, my lifetime here, I made a contract with you to, um, to allow me to see you like I would want to, like I want to be seen. And that means that when I interact with you, um, you've given me the free will to interact with you and to experience you how I want to experience you. So that's, you know, if, if I, if something happens between us, we've already had a soul contract that we could, that we have free will to do that. So I don't think that, um, I don't think that that would be breaking free will to change the past. Like we may have been, you know, mother, son, <laughs> Which, with me I, being in the shopping cart, <laughs> me and Kendra. Well, that was your dream that that yeah. um, that you were in the shopping cart with Kendra, and I was pushing the the shopping yeah. cart. Basically, it was a huge shopping cart. Yeah, that I was your mom in another life. Yeah. So um, yeah, I hope that answered the question. It's well, really just one other thing too that I wanted yeah. to add on. Um, know that you know, as evidence through the Mandela effect timelines are converging right now so even though you're you know you're going in and out of different timelines be assured that the timelines are converging in humanity's best interest so the best op possible outcome will always come out of this so whatever timelines you're jumping onto and getting in and getting out of we're heading in the right direction so just go along for the ride and enjoy it well i've got a difficult subject but okay. we'll talk about it um, our good friend Tiffany Stiles asks, can you both speak on your experience with 20 to 30 year olds and the difficulties that they are experiencing? I have noticed the Ascension energies are hitting them the hardest right now. Hmm. And I, we both have personal experience with children. Um, yeah. and, um, in their twenties. Mine's 20 and he'll be 21 this year. Mine's 23. And I think that they are going through difficult times. I think the best advice that I can give is we can't save them or fix them, but we can definitely hold space for them. We can give them unconditional love and just to try to let them know that they are loved. And I think addictions run really high right now with this, with uh, a lot of these younger, younger mm -hmm. um, people. They're very confused because they're feeling, a lot of them are empaths, and they're feeling the collective consciousness strong. They don't understand why they need to work to pay for food, clothing, shelter, things like that. Um, they want a different world. Most of them don't want to be in this world. And so they're making a conscious choice. I don't want to be in this world. I think suicide is uh, very suicidal thoughts are rampant. I think that's part of the matrix. I think that's part of uh, programming that's sent through the television and the radio and the, the cell games. phone and the video games. Um, um, people, kids, I've heard of kids even hearing uh, voices in their head to kill themselves. So what do you do? Well, the, just support is what you can do because sometimes when these kids are being compacted and pressured and pressured and pressured, that's how you make a diamond. You know, you go from a carbon-based system by pressurizing, and these kids are, by the way, they're having the hot flashes like we did when we were having ascension symptoms. You've got guys having hot flashes. The energy is speeding up inside their body, and they are turning crystalline. I think that these energies in August will definitely help to awaken these kids. And when they awaken, oh my God, watch out. Yes. And, they're, um, they're and that's, that's the bright amazing. side. The bright side of this is that they are the Pluto and Scorpio generation. We're Pluto and Virgo. The generation before us was Pluto and uh, Leo, which led the path for everything that we're all doing right now. Um, they were the hippies, the, 
you know, peace and love, you know, make love, not war people for us. But these people that are Pluto and Libra, Pluto and Scorpio, they're going to take everything that we've done and go light years beyond it. So their, their potential for greatness is immense. So, you know, just be there, support them, guide them. And uh, when it's their turn to bloom, like I said, they're going to take everything we've done and just go miles beyond it. So they it's going to be exciting for them. They are. And, you know, there's waves of ascension, too. Some people are, you know, came here to be the, the ones to leave first. And that will awaken. When I say leave, we're not really going anywhere. We're turning that radio dial. We're tuning into something else. And we're kind of separating energetically and vibrationally from those who aren't on that frequency. So, um, but there'll be a notice noticeable, uh, when, the, when the time does come, it will be noticeable that some people aren't here. And, um, so we pretty much answered yeah, that. Yeah. I do have one here. Um, not everybody's having a positive line skate experience uh -huh. and, um, I'm feeling confusion and a lack of clarity. I'm at a choice point in my life and whatever I choose will change my life spirit significant either way. I'm having difficulty as feeling quite changeable, difficulty knowing what I want. I feel timelines are shifting a lot. They are shifting a lot, mm -hmm. very fast. We're in an accelerated timeline shift right now. I don't know how I'm going to feel regarding my decision. Um, I would say that, um, you know, I think a lot of the younger people from 20 to 30 feel exactly the same way as you do. They can't make up their mind what they want to be, what they want to do, or what they want to eat for dinner. <laughs> um, I think it, that's that's normal. I just want to say it's normal. Um, when you are grounded and centered and when you realize that you're here to make a difference and to serve and that you're not from here, that's when things start falling into place for you, who you really are as an aspect of source. And then you get begin to get a lot of clarity as to how to move forward and things start kind of magically changing in your reality. Um, let me just read the rest of it. Um, I feel, I fear making wrong decisions. I feel other feelings and this is making me foggy. And I often feel being here on the planet is too much but I love the earth very much. You came here because you love the earth. You love Gaia. You love Tara. You love the being who gave herself, her body to be wrecked in order to draw the dark forces in so that they would be trapped here and that they would have to make a decision on how to end this program. That's why you're here and um, to hold the light and if you're having the difficulties on, on making decisions because you're in fear, that's great that you understand that. Accept it and say, um, I no longer want to be in fear and I want to be in love and I want to be confident. I mean, I think what I'm getting for you is a lack of self-love. And if you're an aspect of source, why don't you love yourself? Why don't you love source? You know, the one black hole that we have inside of us in our gut and in our heart is the moment that we were separated from unconditional love source. So knowing that one day when your job is done here, you will get to return connected to source that gives you hope to learn to find that connection within you right now. Go within and find that connection within you. Getting back to what Tiffany was saying, uh, there's a comment here from Kelly Conover, and she's in that age genre, the 20 to 30 group. She said, stagnant is something I've been feeling for so long. My soul has been aching for more. And recently, I finally feel pushed and ready to make the leap. It's exhilarating, but it's also come with much pain. I've been shifting in the pain and have trouble moving on. Finally, I feel ready to go, to let go but also quite lost. Not sure if I explained my opposing feelings well at the moment. No, you nailed it. And you're feeling exactly, Kelly, what so many people, your, your peers are fear, feeling right now. We have children that are going through the exact same thing as what you're going through. And uh, you've said it very succinctly and I appreciate you sharing your comment with us. Um, and I'm sure Tiffany can relate to that if she has friends or 
children that are going through that. I mean, the pain comes up so we can acknowledge it. We can't take it with us. And um, it's a blessing. Yeah. Do whatever you can to try to find something that you love doing. Try to be around people that you love and that are upbeat and high vibrational and try to stay away right now while we're going through this immense shift time. Stay away from people who are toxic to you. Uh, and want to, you know, they don't maybe understand or realize what they're doing by lowering your vibration. Uh, try to stay away from excess, excessive alcohol and drugs and try to try to eat what your body wants and just get rest. And um, I can't, Ground. I can't, I can Ground. read my mind. I just can't stress enough. The grounding is so important and drink lots of pure water. Your body's shifting and changing. If you're not grounded and these energies are coming in through your crown or through your heart and they're just going, you know, changing and bringing up timelines faster than you even know, when you're not grounding, you're sparking. You're going to put out electronics. You're going to blow light bulbs. You're going to make the, the, the lights outside, you know, go off or spark or whatever. Uh, you've got to ground just like a grounding plug in your house closes the circuit, closes the loop. You need to have um, an ongoing relationship with source through your heart down to earth, back up to your heart, back to source. Just this ongoing relationship in a closed loop where you're not sparking off your energy everywhere. And I've talked about this in previous Facebook Lives about how many times you're going to see people, even in this genre, this uh, spiritual metaphysical genre, if they're not grounded, they're losing it. And um, gosh, you know, I'm sure you guys heard the story. I'm not going to even repeat the name, but there's a big story that's floating around the metaphysical field about so and so doing so and so. And I don't even want to mention it, but um, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. So don't worry about yeah, it. Let's just not yeah. talk about it. Let's keep fo positive focus and everything. Yeah. So um, it's just happening out there. And I guarantee the bottom line is that most people are not grounded so that's the importance of grounding and make sure that you get on the ground as much as you can look i just want to give everybody a personal message today we are doing this in the future it's already happened what we're here to do is to to draw the future timeline where we've already changed things to us and just by by just doing your very best to stay here and to realize what a gift it is to be here. And as Dolores Cannon said, there's like a big long line of people that wanted to come here mm -hmm. and be in a body and we got it and we're here. So to try to make the very, very best of things right now. I have been through the darkest times. I have had a really uh, hard life struggled, you know, to, but I have realized that I'm creating my reality and it's up to me. It's all in here as far as what what you're thinking is going to create. So change your thoughts and believe, believe that we this is real and that we're doing this. We're going to get out of this. We are. Mm -hmm. It's happening now. There you go. Diego. Oh, how can I use this August? How can I use these August new energies? Well, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, state your intentions on what you would like to do with the August New Energies. I suggest that you state your intentions on uh, how you would like life on Earth to be. Um, and also, um, I've completely lost my train of thought that happens every now and then. Oh, make sure on the solar eclipse, because the sun is, we do receive um, a lot of energy from the great central sun through our sun, just make sure that um, the solar and join in the meditation on Monday night at 8 p.m. on Facebook Live on mm -hmm. Cosmic Center of uh, Spiritual Lights um, Facebook page that you put your intentions that the energies are used for the light and for nothing else, nothing against humanity. The more you put out there, the more we join in on making these visions cumulative, collective, the more it becomes reality the more we change future timelines. So once we're all aboard, I think it's going to happen a lot quicker. Colette Morgan spent two hours in her pyramid today after a major release night. 
If we ride the waves, we'll reach shore, loving it. Yeah, in my article, I was just stating, that's very cool, because I was stating, you know, if you're not riding the waves, you're being caught in the undertow. And if you've ever been in the ocean, you know that undertow can drag you down. And that's the same thing as that black hole um, that I was talking about, not falling into the black tube. hole, the tube, as Sharon Elizabeth calls it. And you just, you just want to skate. You know, you want to stay right now. The best we can do, I think, is staying neutral. You want to stay neutral and balanced and grounded. And when, when you find yourself wanting to, to snap and react, you know what? Sometimes you need to get that out. But try not to project on someone else. You know, go outside and yell and do rather than yelling at someone else. Have gratitude. These are all things, you know, Greg's been doing this for nine years. He's been posting about what you can do for this time right now. We're going through it right now. So just try to read high vibrational things and try to actually do it yourself. Mm -hmm. We have another question from Carl. Is it Carl or Carrie? I can't see that. Carl. Carl. Okay. <laughs> no, you. No, you. <laughs> My question is, evidence of spirit connecting within myself through voices, moving objects, and, and visions. Can you elaborate with the experiences you have, please? Well, Carl, I'll start by saying I don't really have many uh, paranormal experiences. Um, I don't have visions. I'm an intuitive feeler, um, psychic intuitive, and I think I chose not to have uh, the ability to be a medium, in other words, see, uh, see, hear, um, disincarnate entities. Um, but you've had some paranormal experiences. Yeah, yeah. I, I see entities. Um, I see orbs. I get visions. I have my third eye wide open. I see things before they happen. So, uh, yeah. And that's just, you know, I think we all have our own gifts and abilities. Yes. You can have your third eye open, but yeah. not have um, clair clairvoyance. Mm -hmm. You can have clairsentience, claircognizance. Um, the dreams. I used yeah. to have precognitive dreams when mm -hmm. I was younger. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think everyone has their own abilities, and it's just a matter of uh, fine-tuning those abilities and figuring out what you have. And they'll come to you. I think the more that you, you do your spiritual work, the more abilities that you'll find that you have. However, as the veil is thinning more and more, there are people that are going to be able to see disembodied entities or ghosts or um, reptilians or, you know, there's lots of different kinds of being shadow people, the, the guy with the, the shadow guy with the, with the hat. Yeah. One time we're on a cruise and Michelle was sleeping. I, I, I opened up the door and I'm, I'm standing there. I'm looking at her in bed. There's a man standing next to her wearing this uh, fedora. And w while I was looking at her, I saw her rise up out of her body to astral travel. So it was kind of cool. We all leave our bodies at night yeah. when we sleep. So I don't know what that dude wanted, but no, I've, <laughs> I've I think seen he him. was just curious. I've seen him before myself. So, uh, yeah. The Grim Reaper. I don't no. know. What, is he He's a shorter man. He's he? about maybe five foot two or something like that. Yeah. Well, I think we're getting close to the end. Yeah. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, let's take a peek here. Anything else you wanted to talk about, Greg? Really, we just we were just sitting around, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, yesterday was intense. The energy was so amazing for the way we experienced it. Is we just had a lot of energy, and today we were like, oh, wow. You know, maybe we should get on Facebook and talk about our experience and mm -hmm. see if anybody else, you know, it's really good when you have support from other people um, and you know you're not alone going through this. So mm -hmm. that's the only reason why we really decided to do this today. Yeah. Well, I think that's that's basically it. Um, I had some questions from several weeks ago, but we'll get that in another issue of N5D Facebook Live. Well. So. I'm a holistic life coach, and you can book a session with me at michellewalling.com. I also have a website called howtoexitthematrix.com, and Greg has n5d.com. And don't forget about bodymindsoulspirit.com. It's an amazing alternative holistic health website. Yeah, and uh, if you have the opportunity next weekend, if you're in the Sarasota area, 
check out that whole weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's uh, so much fun. Yeah. The drum good... circle. I forgot to talk about the drum circle oh, after. Did. Oh, I did. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm excited about the drum circle. So um, get to hang out with us um, at, at the drum circle and see us at that harmonic convergence. October 6th and 7th here in Sarasota, Florida, Candace Craw Goldman and I are having a conference, mm -hmm. Quantum Healing 5D and Beyond. And um, you can go to CosmicAwakeningShow.com to find out more information about that here in Sarasota. Synchronistically, Christine oh, yeah. Bradley said, Hello, I just had a thoroughly awesome experience with a quantum healing session with Candace Craw Goldman. Awesome. Yeah. Candace uh, does. Hi Candace. A, hi, Candace. Candace does a radio show for N5D mm -hmm. and is our partner. We're taking on a lot of partners lately. Yeah. This uh, this is about community and growing, um, mm -hmm. growing virtual, you know, internet community as well as in person community. I think it's very important to um, to be around like minded people. So we try to do conferences and workshops and things like that for people. So. Yes, thank you so much, everyone that's watching live and on the recorded version. Namaste to all. Uh, sending everyone love, light, and happiness. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>